Once upon a time, a tailor and a shoemaker decided to leave their tiny villages and venture into towns and cities for better fortune. As you will see, the two of them were quite different from each other. Will you stop that atrocious noise? As if these beasts are not bad enough. Ease up, brother. Being cheerful and singing away will make our journey shorter. Songs do not make the journey shorter. They only make it more annoying. You are just tired. Here, have some water. It will make you feel better. <coughs> the water is not cool at all. Horrible. And after a day or so of walking, they reached a small town where they decided to try their luck. Since the tailor was lively and friendly, people thronged to him, while the grumpy and annoyed shoemaker attracted almost no customers. Here, sew me a shirt with this. Sir! Ah! Fine colour. A shirt of this colour will suit you so well. You are a man of taste. Thank you. You think you can have it ready by tomorrow? Oh, certainly, sir. I shall have it ready by tomorrow. You will look amazingly handsome in it. I also need new shoes. Can you have them ready by tomorrow? With feet as ugly and shapeless as that? It will take me all night to have the shoes ready by tomorrow. <laughs> Don't worry, madam. I shall have your dress ready in two days. This is the most beautiful lace I have ever seen. Oh, you are a delightful man. Here is an advance. Coins clinked in the tailor's purse, while hardly anyone came to the shoemaker. The shoemaker saw this and became jealous of the tailor. Soon it was time for them to leave the town again. Come on, friend. It is time for us to leave. Yes, it's all well for you to say that. You've been lucky. But alas, my misfortune follows me wherever I go. Ah, fortunes come and go, friend. Maybe you will find better luck in the next town. I shall buy our bread and our food for the way. Come. Mind you, we will have to carry food for seven days. No, the next city can be reached in two days. There is a shortcut I have heard of. What if we do not find the shortcut? We shall have to take the longer route which will take us seven days. Well, I choose to believe in the best. So we shall carry bread for seven days for you, and bread for two days for me. So the tailor generously spent money for the shoemaker too, and both of them left for the next town. They walked long and discovered that they had missed the shortcut, and now they would have to travel the long way to the city. Since the tailor had carried bread enough for only two days, his food was over. <sighs> That was the last of my bread, mate. Oh, I told you we might get lost, but you don't listen to reason, do you? The forest will take care of us, brother. Come, we must resume walking. They walked on for two more days. And for those two days, the shoemaker heartily ate his bread, while the tailor had nothing. The tailor became weary and hungry. On the third day, he could take it no more, and he requested the shoemaker. Brother, please, could you share some of your bread with me? I am so hungry. I haven't eaten a morsel for the past two days, and you have bread aplenty. Share it with you so that I go hungry? Oh, you should have got your own bread when you could. Brother, I shall starve if I don't have bread. I shared my wealth with you. Can't you share just a few bites with me? Oh, so you think you are wealthier than I, is it? 
just because you got lucky? Well, then give me all your wealth and you can have some of my bread. What? I bought that bread, mate. <laughs> then why don't you just buy some more in this forest? Fine. A deal is a deal. Here you go. Have this. This is too little. It is this much or nothing. Fine. The amount of bread the shoemaker gave the tailor was too little to satisfy even a bird's hunger. So the tailor starved. He became delirious, weak and tired. That afternoon he felt dizzy and collapsed to the ground. The selfish, cruel shoemaker simply walked on his way to the city. After a few hours, the tailor regained consciousness and heard two birds talk to him. We saw what the bad shoemaker did to you, friend. But life always has help for the kind and the generous. Eat this apple and all your tiredness will vanish. And then proceed to the east. That is the way to the big city. Getting there should yet take you two days. Thank you, thank you so much. The tailor's tiredness disappeared as soon as he ate the first bite of the apple. And soon he was on his way to the city again. But he soon became hungry again. For though he had had the apple, humans need more than that to survive. But the apple had made him strong, and so he saw ducks in a pond. He caught one of them. I am so hungry, duck. I am sorry, but I'm going to have to cook you. Oh, please spare my life. I have kids and a family. If you cook me, your hunger will be satisfied, but for a few hours. But my kids will lose their mother for life. Oh, hungry as I might be, I cannot cause so much pain. All right, little one, I shall let you go. Thank you, human. I promise that I shall return your kindness and help you when the time comes. That is a noble thought. Thank you. So, the tailor, still hungry, continued walking and came to a honeycomb. Ah, oh, I can have some honey. That should satisfy my hunger for a bit. Oh, please don't break our home. It has taken us so long to build it. I am so hungry. I need to eat. Our honey will satisfy your hunger, but for a few hours. But we shall have to spend weeks rebuilding our hive. <sighs> Fine. I shall let your home be. Thank you, human. I promise that I shall return your kindness and help you when the time comes. That is a noble thought. Thank you. So, the tailor continued walking and reached the big city. He embroidered a few kerchiefs for a merchant's wife and got paid well. From that, he fed himself and set up shop in the city. Soon his chirpy, lively good nature had customers thronging to him, and he became the most popular tailor in the city. In fact, he became so popular that he was appointed as the royal tailor for the king. But life can take queer turns at times, and just as the tailor was appointed in palace, the shoemaker too had become the royal shoemaker. And as always, he was jealous of the tailor. Ah, that is such an exquisite robe, my tailor. Why don't you make me new shoes to match the tailor's fine craftsmanship? As you wish, your highness. Mind you, the shoes must look as grand as the robe. They will, sire. The shoemaker was getting increasingly jealous of the tailor, for the king seemed to favor the tailor more. So he hatched a plan to get rid of the tailor. 
Your Highness, the tailor's stitching is really fine, but I am afraid all thy favour is not doing him good. What do you mean? The tailor has taken to rather impolite boasting. That too about you and the palace. Really? What does he say? You remember the ancient crown your grandfather had lost in the forest? Oh yes, that crown was extraordinary. I wish I could find it and bring it back. Well, I heard the tailor boast the other day that he would bring the crown back within 24 hours. Is that so? He would dare boast about a royal heirloom? Call him to me at once. Yes, your highness. I hear that you claim you can bring back our lost ancient crown. Uh, your highness, I, I never... You were a good man, Taylor, and I don't think you would boast unnecessarily. Hence, I am willing to give you a chance. Bring me the crown in the next 24 hours, and if you can't, you will have to leave this city forever. But... You have only 24 hours! The tailor knew this was an impossible task. He did not even know what the crown looked like. Sadly, he packed his things and left town. He had to travel through the forest again to reach the next town. He came to the pond where he had met the ducks and sat there to rest. Hey, human. How are you? <sighs> My friend, well, my fortunes have taken a turn yet again, and I have to leave the city. Why? What happened? The tailor told the duck everything. The royal crown? Well, it has been lying at the bottom of this pond for decades. The king's grandfather had stopped here for a drink of water and accidentally dropped the crown here. Can you bring it up for me? Certainly. So the duck's entire family ducked underwater. And brought up the royal crown. The tailor thanked the duck. And rushed back to the palace. The king was very pleased. And the shoemaker was even more jealous. He soon thought of another plan to oust the tailor. He found the crown all right. But since then, the tailor's boasting has increased even more. Why? What is he saying now? He says he is not just a tailor, but a sculptor too. He can make a wax sculpture of this entire palace. Every room, every pillar, every nail, just as it is in the real palace and he can do it in 24 hours. Well, the tailor is a man of many talents, isn't he? Call him to me at once. Yes, your highness. So, you can make an exact model of our grand palace, can you? Your highness, I never... Well then, you have 24 hours, by the end of which you must have the model ready. Even if a nail or a window pane is missing, you shall have to leave my city forever. Yes, your highness. The tailor thought that this time there was no help for it. He packed his things and left the city. He was traveling in the forest when he heard a voice. Hello, human. Why do you look so sad? The tailor turned and saw, hovering around him, was the queen bee. The tailor told her everything about the wax model. Is it just this? Go home, human. Go home and rest. My bees and I shall have the model ready in no time. So the tailor went home, and the bees flew into the palace, taking a good hard look at every window, every pillar and nail on it, and by morning, they built an exact replica of it and gave it to the tailor. 
The tailor presented it to the king. My, this is beautiful. Well done, tailor. What do you have to say to this, my man? Do you still say the tailor was boasting out of arrogance? I am sorry, your highness. Well, I have been wondering what kind of a man belittles another behind their back. You have been jealous of the tailor, and that is why you had left him to starve in the forest. Your Highness, you know? I am the king, and it is my business to know. I had the tailor followed, and the creatures of the forest told me everything. It is true. Life returns the good one does, and it also returns the bad one does. You have been mean and selfish, Shoemaker. You have no place in my kingdom or my palace. Your Highness! Can you not forgive him, sire? I am forgiving him, and that is why I have not put him in jail for trying to starve you. But he will not remain in my kingdom. Leave within the next hour, and you, Taylor, I am proud to have a citizen like you in my kingdom, and you shall remain here in comfort and luxury till the end of your days. Thus, because of the good that he had done, the tailor lived with happiness and respect for the rest of his life. And for the bad that he did, the shoemaker had to leave the city and no one ever heard of him again.